Hello friends, thank you for joining me today at Homeschool Art. We are going to be talking about a pretty cool lady. Her name was Louise de Bourgeois. Louise was born in Paris, France in 1911. Louise grew up very creative. She loved expressing herself and her emotions and things through her art and she started by doing that through her, her drawings and her paintings. Louise explored themes of family and the human body in, those er in her early works. In 1938, Louise moved to New York City. Louise would spend most of her life in New York City. At that time, the abstract expressionism movement was just blowing up. Louise was surrounded by artists that were exploring different ideas and abstract expressionism and wanting to change things and push boundaries. So during this time, Louise transitioned from two dimension, two dimensional works such as paintings and drawings, things that are flat on a piece of paper. And she decided she was gonna go towards sculpture. Louise used her sculptures and her art to try and understand and express her emotions and the experiences that she was having in life. As with other artists, I would encourage you, if you're going to be looking at works that I am not showing here, if you want to learn more about Louise Bourgeois, then you should do so with your parent or let your parents see first because there are some things in art, in her art, that are not for young audiences. Louise became known for her maman spider sculptures. My sons think that this is super awesome. They're a little creepy, but my daughter hates spiders with a passion. So this was an interesting art project for her to do. It took Louise a long time for her artwork to really start reaching international levels, but by the end of her life, she was recognized internationally all over the world. Her art installations could take up massive rooms, can be seen outside these giant spiders that you can walk through. They're so interesting. Art becomes important to people when they find a way to emotionally connect with it. Louise Bourgeois died in 2010. And now for some inspiration. Louise said, to be an artist, you need to exist in a world of silence. It is not so much where my motivation comes from, but rather how it manages to survive. The spider is a repairer. If you bash into the web of a spider, she doesn't get mad, she weaves and repairs it. You learn for yourself, not for others. Not to show off, not to put the other one down. Learning is your secret. It is all you have. It is the only thing you can call your own. Nobody can take it away. And now I'm gonna show you what we did. I thought it would be fun if we could make a, a wire sculpture. <laughs> so I found the most common wire in our house, which are some old hangers. And we took those and we cut them apart with wire cutters and then we tried to bend them. And it was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. Some of my younger children felt like it was way too hard. I quickly realized I needed to change what I was doing a little bit and I went and got pipe cleaners and those were way easier. So we all decided we were gonna make spiders and I'm gonna show you what we did. First, here's mine. It turned out, <laughs> it's so wonky and strange and it really doesn't stand up. It did not work very well for me. Um, I can show you. I tried to make it so it could stand up and it kind of could and it's teenier than I thought. Not my favorite actually. My daughter was more successful than I was actually. And I kind of loved hers. She had one leg that was curly. I'm gonna try and get it to stand up, but I don't know. She had one leg that was curly, one leg that was curly. She had some other straight pieces and it's kind of an odd shape. And like I said, she really hates spiders. And so this was an odd project for her to do, but I thought it turned out actually kind of cool. And if you turn it different ways, it always looks it looks interesting, I just love it. She also did a little teeny pipe cleaner one that actually turned out way cute. It looks like a spider actually, like it's waving or walking around. <laughs> They're so funny. They're all just a little different. Here's one that had, it was just a couple of holes, like one hole for the body and then three legs and it stands up interesting. Here's another one, my oldest son. He did some red and some white legs and he did little curly things for the feet like that. And I'll just stand it up right there. <laughs> Look at all these spiders. Here's another really excellent one. 
So here it is. That's his spider. And I had a funny little red one. I think that was my youngest son. <laughs> Last but not least, I don't know if this one will stand up. It might have gotten squished. <laughs> but there you have it. I have a whole... Oh, it fell over. I have a whole set of wire and pipe cleaner sculptures inspired by Louise Bourgeois. Now hers were massive, huge, huge, huge things that you could walk through. This, maybe an ant could walk through it <laughs> and feel the same scale that hers did. But I kind of love it. They're a little crazy and wonky and cool, but they have art principle of the day. Today we're gonna to be talking about pattern. The repetition, that means something that happens over and over and over again. The repetition of line, shape, space, and color forms pattern. Using pattern many times creates unity. Some of the most historic examples of pattern in art are stained glass windows. If you look at grand cathedrals, their stained glass windows are a beautiful example of pattern and color and line actually. You can also find pattern in Greek pottery, in Islamic designs, in Aboriginal dot paintings. So there are two categories of pattern. There's geometric and organic. Geometric would be really defined shapes like lots of rectangles or lines. Organic patterns could be something that flows like a wave or flowers or the leaves on a plant. Doesn't necessarily have to be a rigid geometric pattern, but it could be a repeating element. You also have regular patterns and asymmetric patterns. Regular patterns, you can see these in quilts where you have squares, the same size squares next to each other, and many times they're repeating. For example, you could have a red, then a white, then a blue, then a red, then a white, then a blue. They're repeating patterns. If you look at a chessboard, the red and the white squares are repeating patterns. Asymmetric patterns are different. You could have flowers in a field. Maybe it's a red poppy and then some green leaves and another red poppy and some green leaves. And you see a bunch of red poppies and a bunch of green leaves and they are an asymmetric pattern because they're not necessarily in a grid form or exactly perfectly spaced, but they create a pattern because you think red flower, green leaf, red flower, green leaf, or purple iris and green leaf. If you looked at Gustav Klimt, and his famous painting, The Kiss, there are patterns in the clothing of the people. A pattern can create unity and harmony in a piece of work. Thank you so much for joining me at Homeschool Art. I hope you share this with other people. It has been a pleasure to teach you about Louise Bourgeois and her totally crazy but awesome spider sculptures.